Hi guys, I'm Al from elwapepper.com. Are you familiar with perlite, but uh, maybe you're not sure whether or not you should use it? Maybe you know you don't want to use it. Some of us may be concerned about its sustainability, the fact that it's mined, it's a mined mineral. And uh, some of us may not even like the physical structure so much. It's very easy for it to break and uh, pulverize, turning into a fine powder. Well, what good is it to us then? Well, I'm happy to share with you an alternative that I've been able to find, something that's uh, sourced in America, and so if you're in this country, it's semi-local for us, but uh, more importantly, it's a highly sustainable renewable resource because it's made from this, from glass, recycled glass. We separate out our recyclable materials and uh, send them on their way. Well, how are they processed? What's done with them to recycle them? One thing that's done is the production of grow stones. Have you ever heard of grow stones? Well, I've heard of them, but I had never actually used them before. So I actually contacted the grow stone company and they were interested in sending me some samples specifically so I could try them out and show you guys what these have to offer. We have four different things from their product lineup that they've sent to me and I can't wait to show you these. First, there is the GS1. This is a larger grow stone and in general size, well, it's something around this size and when you look at it, it might make you think of maybe like some kind of a pumice material. But uh, the second size that they have comes as the GS2. And they refer to this as a soil aerator. And you get a slightly smaller size with this. So those are your two types of grow stone sizes. Now the GS1, those larger grow stones, those can be used in soil as well, like in a potting mix, but in particular, these are really great for hydroponic growing. These can replace clay pebbles. These definitely are a good replacement for perlite, and you can use these in all varieties of systems, all types of hydroponics. Now, the Growstone GS2, those smaller ones, are a direct replacement for perlite. So anywhere that you would use perlite in a mix, in a potting mix or anything like that, you can use this stuff instead. And what you're using is something that was created from recycled glass, not a mineral that was harvested from the planet. No mining was done to salvage this stuff. Instead, we're repurposing, reusing, recycling materials. And definitely, we can all feel good about doing that. But we might ask the question, how effective is this at replacing perlite? I mean, how does it stack up when you compare the two side by side? As I mentioned earlier, some people hate perlite just because of the fact that it's so easy to break apart. But now on the other hand, this stuff here, squeeze, squeeze as hard as you can. There's no way that this stuff will crush. It will not pulverize. It's virtually indestructible. Well, at least when you're handling it with your hands. And so when you're putting it into a potting mix or into a container or anything like that, you're using a product that you can not just use once, but again and again, and you can continue to reuse this reusable product. The Growstone Company loves to promote this because of its highly effective aeration properties. They say that you can water and water and you don't have to worry that you're overwatering, causing root rot to your plants. Well, how good of an aeration factor are you getting? They say that it's around twice as good of aeration as when you're using perlite. So you can actually use less of these than you would perlite and yet get better results than with that perlite. But at the same time, what's really cool about this stuff is it does retain moisture. In fact, it has very strong capillary forces. If you were to take and put this right next to a little bubble of water, you'll see that it will just suck that right up. So maybe you're thinking what I'm thinking right now. 
sub-irrigated self-watering containers. Yeah, definitely. I want to try this stuff out in some SIPs and I want to see how well that would work helping to provide better aeration, a healthier root system. So that's how well the base product can work for you. There's your GS1, your GS2. Now, Growstone has taken it to the next step and actually formulated a very nice sustainable mix that a person could use. And in particular, this is something that you really want to think about with a hydroponic application. The GS3 is a very nice well-draining mix that you can use for hydroponics where you have a heavy feeding plant and you're time and time again drenching it with a nutrient solution. Say three times a day this area is getting flooded and so this gives really good aeration. Of course with some hydroponic applications maybe we're not using an automatic system where we're watering three times a day and so the mix could start to dry out if it's draining too much. Instead, you might need a little bit of extra moisture retention. And that's why these guys have now formulated the GS4, which you're going to be seeing available. And what they've done in the GS4 is they've increased the moisture retention level by scaling back a little bit on the ratio of growth stones that are in here. But what else is in the GS3 and the GS4? What is this stuff? Are they using peat moss? I mean, a lot of us don't like peat moss either, right? No. Instead, they're using a very high quality coir, one that was triple washed, it's already been buffered, and it's ready to go. And more than just that, they've also included mycorrhizae in here. So this stuff is ready to have that symbiotic relationship with the plant roots. Those fungi are there to help to build an even better network of uh, nutrient retention and absorption to give you the best possible growth that you can get for your plants. So I think that all of these are some really cool products that these guys are working on and I can't wait to try these in some different systems on some small scale and some larger scale. I'm going to be doing a little bit of some passive hydroponic, try some crack key hydroponics and uh, do some sub-irrigated containers, some small ones for seedlings, and maybe even some bigger systems outside. And I can't wait to see how these perform and share those results with you guys. But in the meantime, I wanted to at least show you guys these awesome products that you can feel a lot better about using, particularly if you're looking for something that isn't formulated with perlite. Maybe you do most of your stuff growing in compost just out in the ground, which is great, but maybe you have that hanging basket or a window box or something that has a soilless potting mix. Well, maybe you could make your own and use some grow stones. So I want to really thank Growstone for sending me these samples, allowing me this opportunity to show you guys, my viewers, and of course, thanks guys for watching this video, for giving me the excellent feedback that has led me down this path of finding some more sustainable options for everyone. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And as always guys, happy gardening.